Hi and welcome to City Happenings. I'm Mayor David Black. The Papillion Community Foundation's final event of the year is the annual Holiday Luncheon. Held on December 2nd, the Foundation's Executive Director tells us how things went. And a local photographer shows his work in a local coffee shop. Hear what he has to say about what he does. And Sump Library has a great relationship throughout our community. One such relationship with his Anderson Grove Elementary School. Find out more. All of these stories are next in City Happenings for the week of January 1st. Thanks, Mayor Black. The annual holiday luncheon was well attended again this year. One challenge for event organizer at the Papillion Community Foundation is the logistics. We are a staff of one, <laughs> so, which is great. We have a great board um, and they help a lot. But to put on an intimate type luncheon in a setting that's basically transforming a gym, <laughs> um, that's a big task. So um, it was a long week, um, but I think it turned out great. We had a lot of beautiful tables. The organizations that sponsor tables and sell tickets also decorate the tables. Laura was impressed with the results. All the different tables and all the creativity that went into them and just, I mean, just walking around looking at all the tables and how beautiful they were and that makes the event. Um, so uh, in that, in that perspective, we had a great, you know, a great uh, variants of, of beauty. The uniqueness of each table was tremendous. So we had this wonderful uh, table that was by the uh, the Papillion La Vista Community Theater, which their their play is Hairspray. So their their plate their chargers were old records, mm -hmm. like old vinyl records, and they had like the old candy, like O Henry's, and and, and they had this cool '60s, uh, you know, plastic tree. It was you know just perfect kind of '60s ish. It was it was bright colored and pastels, and it was really pretty too. These beautiful elaborate. Um, you know, like, for example, the Papillion Historical Society, their tables were just gorgeous. And they had that theme of the Historical Society. And then we had um, Crano Wholesale Fuels, which each table, she had four tables, and each one's de decorated just so different, you know, from gold to black and silver to, I mean, just just beautiful. So, um, you know, we, we I, I, that was something that was just really unique to me. And um, all the work that people, the table sponsors, you know, go into each table. You know, the work that they put into it is is pretty cool. So. Transforming the area into an intimate festive space was a challenge. There were some decorating things that I wanted to do uh, there to kind of, you know, lower that ceiling, make it a little more intimate. I, I probably accomplished 75% of my goal there. <laughs> I had a pretty lofty goal, um, but I think I accomplished about 75%. So it, we, we had more light, which was something people wanted, and it was just a little bit more intimate. So that really made it, it was festive. While there were some hiccups, as she puts it, the event was successful. I think it overall went off smooth. Our oral auction was successful. Our raffle was successful. Um, we had some great um, things that were donated by businesses to raffle off and auction off. So, um, you know, we were able to accomplish I would say the majority of our goals with that fundraiser. The holiday luncheon is the community foundation's only fundraiser. We were doing everything in our power to keep it in Papillion, obviously, because that's really important. Um, and, and size of a venue is, is an issue. Um, and the community center is not done yet, so uh, we're anxiously awaiting that. But, uh, you know, so we are just looking at some creative ways to grow it. Um, you know, so that we could add a few more tables and still have the space because that's one of the things, the, the draws of that is walking around looking at all the tables. So you have to have plenty of space to move around. Laura says keeping the luncheon balanced is key to its success. We really are looking at how can we kind of um, keep the old German Christmas appeal, <laughs> but also then accomplish um, more people hearing about it and newer people getting involved. So my goal is to have every business want to sponsor a table because you can really put out your um, personality with your business in a table and, and you know, sell your tickets or give your tickets away. Or, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and a lot of people, a lot of businesses do use that as kind of a reward for their employees because it's a beautiful luncheon. And, um, <clears throat> but we just have to have ways that we keep that fresh. Looking forward, Laura has these thoughts. 
we had a cute story this year, you know, where we do a little pass around the table, and that was always fun. And we had a real live auctioneer this year, which I think added some energy to it, and that was really fun. And, um, you know, just I think we just have to continue to come up with ways to add a, a new fresh piece every year, just like with all of our events, like with Winter Wonderland. You know, you can't just do the same thing every year. you got to do something different that people will want to come down, and it will attract them back here, you know, to come here every year. Papillion photographer Herb Thompson's exhibit at Tripoint Coffee House in downtown Papillion is all about nature scenes. At the last minute, Pastor Chris Evenson asked Herb if he could put up an exhibit. The photographer says there was no time to think about a theme. The portrait of trees is something that I just really am drawn to in, uh, in any case. And um, fall being probably, fall to winter being probably my favorite time because it's, it's at that time of the year when uh, you're able to uh, to see and experience the, what I call the essence of the tree and I, and I actually consider them to be portraits of trees um, no leaves or anything so you can really see what's what's happening and see the character of a tree so that kind of drove uh, my choice and um, uh, if you can call it a theme so yeah that's uh, that's kind of how we chose to exhibit these images and these are the first of the images of that cell phoneography project and there are quite a few of those images his cell phonography project gets him away from his professional cameras and taking this latest round of photos with his cell phone. You know, I, I really can't say what made the shift for me because as you know, I'm, I'm DSLR, I'm a Canon guy. Um, and I, I guess at some point I just started taking pictures. I think it was, it was probably a year and a half ago when I transitioned to a slightly different job which landed me downtown. In different hours, I used to work a night shift and at that point, uh, at that change, uh, I suddenly found myself working an earlier shift starting at say 6.30. And I worked two different buildings. And so early morning I'd be downtown along 16th and Farnham in that area mm -hmm. watching the sun come up. And of course for a night out, I wouldn't normally be around at that time of day to, to really see it. And just uh, was captivated by the quality of, of well, I guess what, we artists call the golden hours. So early in the morning with that golden sunlight scraping across the architecture, which I never really stopped to appreciate the fact that we have a lot of wonderful architecture in the city of Omaha and, and Papillion. Um, and so I think that's where it started. I would just kind of put it in HDR mode and, and aim it uh, at, at some of this wonderful light that I was seeing. His cell phone was a constant companion just about everywhere we would visit on say an odd weekend or if we were traveling work for vacation obviously uh, I was drawn to certain you know certain subjects and I'd grab the phone it's always with you and they say the best camera that you can use is the one that's with you. An association with someone who printed his photos for an exhibition in the 1990s pushed him to move forward with his current approach. Herb says he didn't think the photos were large enough to print his colleague said otherwise. And so he suggested I send him one of my uh, Instagram files, and he would prove it to me. And so uh, I said, Terry, well, I'll send you the Instagram, edited Instagram file, and I'll send you the original, because I really was not convinced. Uh, and by the way, all of the images are uh, edited through Instagram software. I don't use their tool or their uh, filters. I don't like their filters. I use their tools. Um, and so I sent both those files to him, and he called me the next day and said, Herb, you're your print's ready, come and get it. Went down to Hot Shops, went in, and he had printed a uh, 16 by 20 inch print. And I was blown away. Uh, it's one of the, that print is, is, uh, is, is showing here. Uh, and from there, it just, it just has grown. Herb now has a change of heart. Of course, I'm convinced now that I can at least print up to 16 by 20 inch. And uh, probably the, the image quality is, is getting to the point where you can probably go a little bit larger than that if you need to. So. That's kind of how I got started with the project. We'll hear more from Herb at a later date. Sump Library has built many community relationships. One is with Anderson Grove Elementary School. Teacher Lloyd Matthews explains the interaction between Sump Youth Services Director Kathy McMahon and former Anderson Grove Principal Ann Harley. Kathy was at a board meeting or something took place where and came in contact with Kathy, and Kathy was reaching out to the school district and basically saying, here, you know, we're a resource for your teachers, we want to work with the school district, we want to be here, you know, we're part of this community, we want to help and aid in, in educating children. McMahon's approach was a total surprise to Principal Harley. 
really taken back, excited, enamored about the energy that Kathy had. And we had a boys book club that was going on and Kathy came out and our boys book club was um, a, a group of boys that met after school trying to encourage them reading and Kathy came out. And then after interacting with Kathy there, we were like, we had to get this lady in the classroom. Classy's energy was just tremendous. Then came the event that solidified the relationship. Kathy even um, brought to me one time an opportunity to Skype with an author in the Midwest that was out of state. Um, she handled the communication with that author. Um, we then ordered books from that author to offer autographed all the books for the kids. And then once a week, we would Skype with that author and talk about the writing process and what the kids thought of the story. And it just kind of blossomed and moved into this and thinking, well, could we do this locally and bring other authors in? And then finally it's come to this. Can you believe it? It's 2018 and we've made it to another year. We at the city look forward to a successful and fruitful year. We have a new community center coming and continue to see both residential and business growth. We hope that everyone had a great and safe holiday season. Stay up to date with what's going on in Papillion. There are lots of ways to do it. You can find us on Facebook, follow the City of Papillion on Twitter, or even watch our YouTube channel. Information about all of our departments and programs is available on our website. For more about Papillion, go to www.papillion.org or just call the Mayor's Hotline at 402-827-1111. Thanks for watching.